Welcome back, everybody. This Week in America, website thisweekinamerica.us. Thank you for joining us on the program today. Growing up in Woodstock, New York, Adam Altman has been exposed to the creative arts for his entire life, earning a writing arts degree from State University of New York at Oswego, graduate degree in information science from the University of Albany. He's written over 100 telecommunications articles published in various technology magazines, has been honored with writing scholarships. His fiction books include his fantasy novel set in the land of Tasmir, which begin with Life Shaker. His young adult novels consist of Liliana's Fan, Liliana's Summer, and Just Out, Lillian and Philippe. He's with us on today's This Week in America to talk about the second in the series. This is called, and it's an excellent book, it's called Dream Spells, the second Tasmir novel. Adam Altman, welcome to This Week in America. Great to have you with us on the program. Ah, thank you. The books nice are fascinating, and I want to talk about how all these ideas come to you. And let's let's go back to you as a, as a child, because I mentioned that you grew up in a, in a creative atmosphere. Yeah. When did this happen where you decided, I really enjoy reading books, and someday I would like to write books? You know, you know it's, it goes back all the way to, like, fourth grade. And I started reading... Um, reading books about animals and I just started I just enjoyed writing little stories about animals when I was in fourth grade they're little one page two page little things and I always was interested always very creative coming from a very creative background and family and um, and then and then as I grew older um, I started to uh, read books like The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings and that really just inspired me to to go full length um, creatively and write books in the fantasy and young adult realm. How important were books to you? And and obviously it influenced your adult life greatly, but how much of you today goes back to those early days where you actually sat and spent reading books and using your imagination? Extraordinary, extraordinarily amount of time um, reading. And it's a big, it was a big influence in my life. Like everything I read, really more for pleasure than for school. Um, influence the way I think, the way um, the way I live my life, the way just I've always had um, a lot of very goal oriented person that I just felt like I wanted to write a book and I wanted to write something that's a little different than everything else out there and I think I've achieved that with dream spells to some degree. Well, you've written so much, and we talk about dream spells. That's the second Tasmir novel. Our guest on this week in America is Adam Altman. His website, by the way, information on all the books is very simple, Tasmere, and that's T-A-S-M-E-A-R dot com. Go to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, and link on to get all that information. So we're talking fantasy novels, young adult novels I mentioned with the Liliana series, uh, and writing poetry as well. Let's talk about this book, Dream Spells and Tasmere. You created basically a whole new universe when you sat and did that. Talk to me about Tasmir and, and where the idea for that came from. Um, for, ta- for Tasmir, it really was a, a growing experience over the course of many, many, many years. It took me uh, to write Life Shaker, my first book in the series. It took me like 10 years to write, and I was just creating, um, trying to create all the details of uh, Tasmir itself and trying to figure out all the lands and what I wanted for the lands to be like, like Fiocopia and Landia and, and other, other uh, places that I wanted to create. And, and really, originally, I was all about tradition. I wanted, to, I wanted to really focus on tradition and ritual when I started Life Shaker. And it, became, and it, just, it just became something bigger and bigger. And, and then I just came up with different ideas and, um, and Life Shaker was born. And then dream spells came out of really my idea, my psychological ideas about dreams and about um, about what happens to a person when when tragedy strikes, and how they react to it. And so I I created a character named Pat Noah, which really was the driving force be- behind uh, my books and uh, Tasmir itself. When you sit down and you and you have this idea. How difficult is that? I mean, do you, do you gra- diagram, plot out? How do you go about juggling everything? Because if you're going to go back and write a crime novel set in the 1960s, it, it's fairly simple. You can pull up and do a little research online, and, and the world is already created for you. It's already been there. You're not only creating these characters that have not existed before. You're creating where they're living, 
which has never been created before. How do you go about planning all of that? Is that like an intense diagram before you get started, or do you sort of, as you go, maybe make some adaptations? Um, you know, I'm a little bit different than I think a lot of writers in the fact that I do tend to use outline in my head more than in than on paper. I will jot, jot down notes and I will come up with ideas. A lot of the ideas come at night when I'm thinking about it and then and I wake up and and I say, okay, I got a, I got a good idea for this part of my novel. A lot of times in my novels, and it is the case with Dream Spells End and Life Shaker, I had the beginning and the end already plotted out to some degree and it's the middle that I take some liberties with and try to put it together. And that's the way I've been, that's the way I write. I, I really want to be as creative as possible. And I think outlining to some degree stops that. And uh, even though I usually have a, have a way to think about it and how I want the um, novel to progress in my head. That's interesting. So an outline is sort of like what a, a boundary. You really don't feel maybe it's, it's subconscious, but you feel you really can't go beyond that because you really haven't allowed for it. I mean, you're narrowed your thinking, I guess, when you're doing an outline. That's what, that's how I think, I think about it, but I do use it. There's some degree, you have to have a lot of structure when you write the novel. So there is some degree of outlining, but I just tend to jot it down, not more freestyle than I do, than I do actually outlining every single detail. I might brainstorm, um, characters and, and plot levels and stuff about, uh, Tasmir itself. You're listening to This Week in America. Our guest on the program is Adam Altman. He's written a number of books. This is Dream Spells we're talking specifically about. The second Tasmere novel. His website is Tasmere, T-A-S-M-E-A-R dot com. The book and all the information available at his website. You can go to Amazon and check it out as well. The books are really doing well. And I understand that what's really exciting here is you're talking about maybe what a, a, a game coming out of the book as well. I am glad you met. I'm glad you mentioned that. I mean, I wasn't sure if you even knew about that. Um, do you know the in Dream Spells the um, the um, I'm trying <laughs> trying to get this right. All the all the pictures on in Dream Spells are actually game cards for my game that's incorporated in the novel of Dream Spells called Quad Sedes. And I wanted to um, make a game associated with um, Quad Sedes into a whole new a whole new level of uh, of gaming or a card or a card game just to just to start because I really I really thought I had a, an idea that it originally started with four way chess, and it decided to branch it out into what a fantasy realm sort of chess game yeah. that is really very very close to uh, what I talk about. What's the main theme of dreams of dream spells? And I could see this being really successful, and you, you're pursuing that. The illustrations you mentioned in the book are excellent as well. There's a uh, you'll see the the Tasmir characters, you'll see throughout the book illustrations, and even a map of Life Shaker. I mean, you not only in your mind have created this this other universe, you've got it mapped out for us so we can sort of follow along here. It's very thorough. You've got everything there for us to enjoy the the book. Right. I have in Dream Spells, um, I not only have uh, the land of, Ta- of Tasmir, which I had in Life Shaker, I also have the city of Galish, or the country of Galish, I should say, um, in, in its own plotline, and that's really came, they came out so many years ago, I mean, it's amazing I finally got to it, and to be able to show it to the rest of the, to the, rest of the world, I guess. What's so impressive about the book, and the book is Dream Spells, the second Tasmir novel written by Adam Altman, our guest on This Week in America, is how you're, you're able to put together, sort of weave into the novel, friendship, politics, some sorcery, intrigue, romance, adventure, you've got all of that. As I'm reading, it's like, wow, how do you keep track of all of that? Because you you introduce them, and then you have to sort of wrap each topic up as you're going through the book. Talk about that process of having so much going on in the book. It's not like one theme running all the way through. Yeah, yeah. well, thank you for noticing, first of all. Um, Oh, my pleasure. Yes. Um, I really, really am very psychological in, in my books, and I like to focus on not what's there on the adventure of dream spells and what happens in dream spells, but a lot of the background of what happens. I'm very, very psychological in my novels, and that's and that's how I think the intrigue comes out in the romance and the, um and and I love mystery 
in inside of my fantasy. And and I like to and I'm big I'm big on trying to surprise people in in the fantasy realm. You, you just never people that read fantasy expect some things, and then with my books, it's never quite what it seems. And that's and that's really been my focal point in and especially in dream spells. What's interesting is you're reading because sometimes you take a turn and it's like, man, I didn't see that coming. I didn't think we were going in that direction. And it does get you to think. Is that part of like, okay, I want to entertain you, but if you're thinking a little bit along the way, that that's fine as well. Yes, absolutely. I like to, I like people to read in between the lines. I think it's something a little bit lost in, in today's uh, today's market with all of the uh, with all of the books that come out now. I think it's so straight laced. There's not as not as much reading between the lines as there has been in the past. You know, it's interesting, and the book, again, is Dream Spells. It's available at Adam's website, which is tasmere, T-A-S-M-E-A-R.com. Go to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, and you can link on directly to Adam's website. Information on this and all the books that Adam has written, available at amazon.com. When you were talking before about how you go about writing, the process of writing, you talk to some people that are like, I block two hours a day to write, then I shut it off and I come back to it you know, tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock and I start again. And I really don't understand how you can do that. To me, if you really get engrossed in the story you're telling, and it's quite obvious from listening to you and from reading your books, your books that you do, this is what, maybe a 24-hour process where it, it, it constantly your mind is churning, it's working, it's trying to come up with something? Yes. Yes, I mean, I don't spend there's a lot of time that i don't spend writing i'm i'm doing the best i can to have time to write um but uh it's always churning in my head as you as you're talking about it's always i'm always trying to come up with uh with stuff of of how to make the book better how a lot of it's editing um if you and a lot of it's redrafting and redrafting and redrafting your books until and a lot of it's very subtle differences that i think make a big big difference and you really, really, even though you might be writing for a certain amount of time, you're really thinking about it all the time. Reader input, how important is that? You write a lot in series. So as you're, you're finishing, finishing up with Life Shaker and people are, are reading, enjoying, and getting back in contact with you, do they give you some ideas, ask questions, things that maybe will nurture new ideas for the sequel? Absolutely. Absolutely. Sometimes... Sometimes they try to give me ideas while I'm writing a novel, and, um, and while I may while, while I may incorporate it into a future novel, it's it's a little hard to do it on the structure of the novel that I'm working on at the time. But I'm always always very interested in ideas, and I'm and anyone anyone who writes to me on, on my email, which is on my website, um, I will be I'll be glad to respond to. I, I think it's very very interesting to hear from people and to uh, and to get different ideas from different areas and what they think about something that I may not have even thought about from what they read. I think, I think it's very valuable. I mentioned the series Liliana. You've got what three that are out now working on the final Liliana novel. I, I describe that as, as young adult novels. Is there any great difference in how you go about writing that as opposed to the, the Tasmir series? Yes, actually. Yeah. I think, um, the young adult novels are, I think actually, Less, a little bit less structured than um, my uh, my uh, Tasmir novels because I have to follow a certain formula for my for my Tasmir novels that would work to some degree. Liliana is more. I really want to get inside of uh, the character of Liliana. That's really the main focus. And then later on, Philippe. Um, and I'm really into the adolescent nature of uh, Liliana, and. So I think I think there's a big difference between the books and the way I write them, just in the structure and the, and thus, and it's a much more simple the the Liliana books. I mean, the Dream Spells, for instance, is very is very complex in a lot of ways, and Liliana is much simpler, but yet there's also a lot to think about. So it's so I think the writing writing is is different between the two. I I personally find the Liliana books a little easier to write, but but it's uh. They both have their challenges. Well, I can imagine, and our guest on the program this week in America is Adam Altman. He's written a number of books, the adult novel, the young adult novels we're talking about now, Liliana and Philippe is the newest. Uh, also, the second Tasmir novel, Dream Spells, all of this available 
at uh, Adam's website, which is Tasmere, T-A-S-M-E-A-R.com. Information at our website, thisweekinamerica.us. As I'm looking at young adult novels now, so much different than 120 years ago when I was considered a a young adult when you've got the Hardy Boys and that pretty much is laying it out there and you can sit down and and read the book in about 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. A lot of really good thought-provoking books out there, storylines. Have young adult novels changed a lot since you were a young adult in reading these books? Yes. I think uh, I think they have different I, I feel I feel that the fantasy I think it's a lot of fantasy oriented uh young adult now and it's also a, a lot of um dystopian young adult which never really was a part of the past and uh and I and unfortunately, I do think that the young adult is actually more simplified now in some in some ways. At least the writing of it, I should say, not the plot line. The plot lines are very complex in a lot of them, but but the writing I think is simplified in some ways as well. Um, I think I think past novels and when I was growing up really really were more like what I'm trying to write and and had uh, had you really thinking had really thinking besides. Um, the adventure aspects, which is great, but also uh, also made you think about a lot of things, and I think I think that's changed a little bit as as you get to the young adults and na- young adult novels now. I think there's a lot of well, there's a lot of books out there that also make you think. There's just a lot more out there, and it's a very much become a, an American kind of thing. The young adult novels. I don't think in other countries, it's it's quite you wouldn't see in the Barnes and Noble and other countries a big young adult section like you do here. It's it's kind of interesting, kind of intriguing. Well, and you'll find young adult books now listed in the New York Times in the book section on Sunday as you read through there. You've got a whole listing of those. It makes it easy to follow. But as I'm watching that, and I've got a couple minutes left in the program, I'm looking and I'm thinking, well, that author was just on like a couple of months ago with the with a book. Is there sometimes a tendency, and you talk about maybe they're not quite as intricate as they used to be to make you think like they used to be. Is there sometimes a tendency to do sort of a formula thing where it's sort of like, uh, you know, not color by numbers, but but write by numbers and and maybe put books out before they're really to the point that they should be released? Um, maybe. I'm not really. I'm not really sure. I think. I think there's a lot of. Uh, there definitely are some formula books, but that's been the part of the past too, like the Hardy Boys and all of those exactly. type of formula books. So I mean, it's not like it's not like that's changed that much. I think I think publishers are looking for something that kids that kids really relate to and like are very interested in that would pick up and read right away. While so, and some other really really good books might be missed because of that, um, but. But I feel I, I feel that a lot of publishers are looking for the big hit, and uh, so therefore they'll look at stuff that at the price of writing, I, at at the cost of some writing. I think would be some would be. I'm trying, I can't explain it. Exactly. Well, I know exactly what you're talking yeah. about, and sometimes you think, okay, maybe they're doing these a little too quickly, and they're not really crafted yet. And then you read other books, and the books that I'm talking about, Liliana, the the series uh, from our author, Adam Altman, uh, our guest on the program, a minute or so left. I mentioned this was the final Liliana novel, uh, Liliana's Realms, which you're working on. In fact, you're finished with it. How how difficult is it to say, Liliana, I'm moving on now? How difficult is that to leave a character, you you know, after watching her grow, after a being there and, uh, and and having her grow yeah it's it's difficult in some in some ways um originally liliana's fan my first book in the series was going to be my only liliana book and then i re and then because of what what uh what other people thought and um because of some ideas that came into my head i i decided to write another three books involving liliana and it's hard to let go, but I think, but I think Liliana's realms when it comes out and, um, well, is a good is a good ending and a good a good bon voyage for uh, for the character. Not like, but of course, in fantasy and it is never it's Liliana may never be gone in my head. And if I write another young adult series, I won't be surprised if Liliana comes back, but not, but never as the main character. Well, we'll be looking forward to seeing the final in the series, Liliana's Realms. 
The other Liliana books, all three are out with the addition of Lillian and Philippe, which is now available. That's from uh, Adam's Young Adult Novels series. That's available all across the country. You can find it at Amazon. Of course, you can go to Adam's website as well. And all the information on his fantasy novels, Dream Spells, the second Tasmir novel is what we've been talking about uh, on today's program. His website is Tasmir, T-A-S-M-E-A-R.com. And if you're traveling and can't remember all of that, just go to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, and you can link on directly. Adam, I enjoyed having the opportunity to read your, your works of art, and it's a pleasure to have you on the program. Thank you for joining us. Okay, thank you. I appreciate uh, I appreciate everything you've done, and, uh, and I hope to talk to you again. I would love that. Again, the website for Adam is Tasmir, T-A-S-M-E-A-R.com. You're listening to This Week in America, website This Week in America. Dot U.S.